Now, the real woman probably isn't even named Stephanie. Her photos have also been used without her consent, which I have said from the very first moment. Now, since I'm doing this under educational purposes for everybody with Dr. Phil, I'm agreeing with the concept of the show under fair use. Right? Mm hmm. And I'm doing this also to educate people that even if Dr. Phil's talking about it, we in Georgia need to know about it too, right? <laughs> Her name is Angie, right? That ain't even near Stephanie, but in a way, yeah, in a way, no, right? Correct. That's been stolen before, right? Yes, too many times. Because she's a pretty girl, right? Very beautiful. A 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Like I told you, I'm like a 7, right? I don't even try to mess with all that, all right? I'm Jane Verona. I am 28 years old. I am a social media influencer as well. I graduated from law school. And you two actually do know each other, right? Yes, yes. For a very long time. Yeah? Because yes. you're, you're related? Yes, cousins. Your cousins. Like our, our moms are sisters. Okay, your moms or sisters, okay? Yes. You can tell, you can tell. <laughs> never spoken to him? No. Never texted with him? Nothing. Don't know him? Haven't received any money from him? Don't have any connections with him whatsoever? And no. they skinned this man out of $20,000, right? No. Oh, no. <laughs> this is got to be... This is also why it's hard for anyone, including me today, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, like I said, when I go to the mall, I just try to eat my food. And unless something's going on where I'm totally uninvolved, right? Or I'm blacked out at a certain point in the interaction, right? I just think I'm eating the food the whole time, right? <laughs> having a presence on the internet and these are two entrepreneurial uh, young women who are out there uh, but you know this is the woman that for three years you thought you were talking to what do you say about this now that we've tracked them down and they've been gracious enough to take their time mm -hmm. because they really wanted you to have some clarity here and when we mm -hmm. came, they were both very great and see the problem is they're real people they're easy right see even when they send me nude shots of these girls they posted them somewhere right but not to me not to you <laughs> right 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 and she didn't scare me. He's mad with the person who really did using her pictures, but it ain't his or her fault, right? It's the scammer's fault, right? And like I told you, you're just sending me pictures of naked women who I know are probably not involved with it, right? <laughs> and I don't mind looking at naked women. I look at naked women all my life, man. <laughs> beautiful girls, beautiful girls. But it's like the song says, you know, you can look, but you can't touch without permission, right? It's no different than the Angel in the Centerfold song by Jake Osborne, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> right. But that's what I mean. I still wouldn't expect Miley Cyrus to come to my house to be with me. <laughs> no matter what you say, Liam. Unless you know, and she knows, but I don't know, right? <laughs> That's strange, right? Though anyone can get to my house at night if they're really in Georgia, but I don't even know that, right? So are you making the obsession, right? And there really never was one. No, no, no. You can't do that, or you're crazier than me, idiot. You're the crazy person then. No, no, no. Not after no woman who don't want me, and then, like I told you, right. I don't get jealous if she's with her boyfriend. Right. <laughs> but you can't get jealous if she's not with me, because I might be her new boyfriend and not even know. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. 
Because I wouldn't rat her out. <laughs> I wouldn't even say we were together because I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but if she is coming by or not, right? You're the reason she sees my behavior as more mature, not me. I know. I don't know she would even want me that way, right? Unless she comes here and likes the package I delivered to her. Mm hmm. And then she goes home to you, but <laughs> I'm I'm the fun time and you're the miserable time, right? If that's what's happening as well. Mm -hmm. And I also know you're the reason I don't know if I don't know, right? So I'm not mad with her again, right? I know it's you who don't want me to know. <laughs> not her. Now, like I said, there's always an Asian guy at the restaurants. And then there was an African-American woman who, you know, did the cash register, right? And like I said, I drove down Polson to go home because that's where Dr. Chu's office is, right? And I, I'm getting the general location of it. And when I go there, I'm going to just plug the address in Google anyway, you know, or Maps, right? To get there anyway, right? <laughs> not even worried about it. Not even worried about it. And my appointment was at one forty-five on November first. Now, as we go along, I will start paying the other bills: the car payment, the <laughs> so on and so forth. Right? Though some of them are already taken out. Right? <laughs> the only one I got to still do is the uh, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I appreciate you guys for coming and of course. telling me the truth. And there's one thing I when I I want to point at her because I think it's Stephanie, but it's not. Right. Because I did catch something you put with her. What's your name? Angie. Angie. She wore had a necklace on one time that said Angie on it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I own a gold necklace with diamonds that said Angie, and I usually wear it, but not all the time. Not all the time. Had a picture of wearing a necklace that said Angie. And you uh, see the A N I E N G, no. right? He's uh, even using a name similar to hers, right? With her, her real name, her real name, too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Dick. Um, <laughs> right. Are either of you in relationships? Yes. Yes. Both of us. No, you're going to be embarrassed. You're going to be embarrassed. Well. I'm married. Uh -huh. I've been with my husband. Um, five years, and we've been married since May, May 5th of uh, this year. Introduce your husband, Henry. He's right down here. Henry, right there with the white shirt. Henry? He got lucky. He got lucky. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting this effort and doing I this. Know that. <laughs> really? For Charlie as well. And, uh, but you uh, can see him almost trying to so not tear up, right? I've been with right now for a year. Yeah, say hello, Rick. Your hands right, right. <laughs> and like he said, I know they're scamming me. I, I keep telling them, even when they're sending me huge shots, I'm not interested. Stop. Right. <laughs> right, right. What do you hope for Charlie? I want to find this person, honestly. Because that's so unfair. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Did she lie or did someone else lie about her age, right? Because she said she was 37. <laughs> and then I lost time around her. And then I'm, you know, going back to the nail job. Then I lost time around her. And I'm going back to the nail job. And the memory's sketchy until I leave, right? And then I'm out an hour later, right? <laughs> then it should have took the nail job, right? <laughs> Man, Which would have been 40 minutes, right? Of and I missed both movies, one by uh, over doing 50 it. minutes and the other one over by 40 minutes, which doesn't include the, um, uh, what you call it, previews, right? That, uh, it is not yours. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't even imagine that. And so it's because you can't imagine it, it's, it's hard for you to... To, to recognize that, that's pretty smooth. That makes it hard for you to see it coming 
and easy for you to prey upon. But don't lose that, and I don't want you to let this Mm -hmm. Make you a cynic and make you paranoid. Right, right. An experience, and you know, you're like me. We didn't grow up with the internet. Right. And so we're not as savvy. savvy right. It. And I've had old staff teach me about it, but you, know, you have to learn the lessons because it's you guys live with it every day, right. and you get. You get scammed, and I get messages on a daily basis. I was sending them last night. Um, we're in a group chat. Of all the people that come to me, like, oh, you scammed me. And it's like, I didn't scam you. It's these yeah. fake profiles that misappropriate my pictures. Yeah. But it happens often, and I hate that. Yeah. Obviously, innocent people are getting hurt by it. You two are victims just like Charlie here. And I want everybody to know that. So yeah, when yeah. they see your pictures, they go, oh, no, no. Right. I've and seen they them. want other people as well. Exactly. Yeah. Now, there's mm -hmm. in today now sometimes I'll be just polite and say thanks for the pictures or right <laughs> right lovely pictures right beautiful pictures right <laughs> I can get them too and put them on my own computer I can get women I like right even the camera girls you can do snaps of them right or snips of them right while they're doing the scene with you, right? <laughs> and see, they can't do nothing about that either, right? And see, I'm really trying to help everybody here, right? Like Dr. Phil, right? <laughs> so if I'm a disabled veteran with no real qualifications, right? Dr. Phil, even if he's not a real doctor, has a doctorate in some area, right? So he's an expert in something, right? <laughs> So he kind of has the support of Oprah as well and the TV networks, right? So you know you know somewhat what I'm talking about, right? But some people don't want to see that, right? <laughs> right? Now, I don't know, like I told you, if they didn't try to sabotage any chance I would have to even get on the show either, either, right? <laughs> uh, right. Exactly, right. See, they might even write someone in my name and be detrimental towards them and say evil things to them I would never say to them, right? And uh, pretend they're me. <laughs> and that could have started with Sheena. I'm not sure what happened with her. But I don't think she's dumb enough to not know the difference between making love to a woman versus your tongue only, right? <laughs> There's a little bit of a difference there, don't you think, right? <laughs> Just using your tongue on her and then having sex with her, I'm sure she would know the difference, right? Even if she's a virgin type, even though her dad messed with her, she didn't act like they had sex, but she stopped him before it went that far, right? But the problem was he was willing to do it. Dang, <laughs> you know, he's playing lot. <laughs> bad lot, bad lot. <laughs> See, it was the daughter's there. <laughs> Paranoid about the men around him and choosing their dad, right? That's crazy, too, but I mean, you kind of more understand that point of view there. <laughs> but there again, it's still wrong. It's still wrong. <laughs> There's still laziness on the part of the daughters, right? <laughs> yeah. But now you probably never heard of the Levite and his concubine, right? Well, what happened there was completely different but similar. And see, the concubine got sent out actually to the men... They abused her all night, right? Meaning they knew her, right? They raped her, right? And the Levite knew there was nothing neither one could do about it, so he just said, come on, get up, right? But they abused her so badly, it killed her, it killed her. And then he cut her body up into 12 pieces and sent it to the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> Right. And this is just as messed up as anything that's messed up in the Bible too, right? But that's the thing. You could do that, right? You hear of them cutting up people today, right? <laughs> but that's the death of Satan, right? Now, the death of Jesus is to help us raise from the dead, right? But the problem is, we're already 
in a loop. Right. How do we get out the loop? Right. Either Satan has to stop sitting or we have to find a way to operate outside of him. Right. That's the problem too. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm that, yes. The gender identity stolen and you've met the real people so you know that's who they are. They're there with their fiance and husbands and so you know. Mm -hmm. And you can go to their internet mm -hmm. locations, their Instagrams. You can see they've been out there for a long time. The question is, you know, what, what do you do now? Mm -hmm. And there's someone today that I'd like to introduce Charlie to whose identity has also been stolen and is someone that you might not expect that to be true of. Coach Mike Bear, founder of Cast Centers this year, uh, and he has experience dealing with identity theft as well and overcoming his own obstacles to becoming a renowned life coach. Now, Mike has written a book called One Decision, and Charlie has one decision to make today about how he is going to move forward and I've invited Mike here today mm -hmm. to offer some advice to Charlie and you know the pain of, of all of this because you, you've had your identity now stolen, right? again thanks for having me doc yes this is a commercial right but guess who it's for the guy selling his book right, right. Now, in some ways that my but has been the point is they it's they something really real real <laughs> you weren't on the already they took we all might deal with her. Right? Off your site and put it on somebody on an oil rig. Yeah. And yeah. stole your identity and then used you to write to women. And I don't know why they would use my mug. You know, I don't think I. I'm not attracting the high dollar that the <laughs> Canadian Instagram models are attracting, but. Yeah, the girls I understand, but. I get messages every day. Yeah, I mean it, it, that's what I mean. We didn't grow up with this, so we don't... No, <laughs> we didn't. This is a billion-dollar industry of of stealing people's identities mm -hmm. and pretending to be somebody you're not and using it to get money, and here's all. Well, the reason is not a lot of people even watch my channel, but the point is I'm not doing it to show me, but then I know what they're up to. Right. You understand, right? And they're using my ex and my stepdaughter, right? <laughs> right. Because they stop mapping with her, too, right? That's bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Trust me, trust me. That's why I can't let that play, right? Even, even. And even when I'm telling them something, it's to show my viewers the few I really have, right? <laughs> And if they're real people, mm -hmm. then I'm not the one full of crap. They are there. <laughs> but it is hard for everyone. In a world of fantasy and reality, especially fictional movies, right, where you're incorporating real life situations. Now, when Miley Cyrus shot the movie in Savannah, that don't mean they were really legally even there, right? Personally, personally. But could they have been, I guess? Either way, either way. But when you're using a real location that I know of, right, you're blending my real life with your fantasy, right? <laughs> but not me yours, right? I still can handle that, that right? I still believe Molly was there or not for me, but her boyfriend, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and I don't go that route, Miley. <laughs> and I think you would be, as the young lady, more concerned, even if I deny I'm interested in you, <laughs> then Lynn will be worried about it, right? <laughs> so don't lie to me either, right? <laughs> Your problem with Lim is he didn't do what you wanted him to do, and you're still mad about it, right? And you're trying to blame me too, right? I don't know you either, either. <laughs> That's what he means, right? If you're being a B about it, <laughs> or a P about it, <laughs> you're really lying. 
Because I was never interested in you either, either, right? Not to mean you're an ugly girl, but that I don't play that with someone I don't know, right? Period, period. Whether you're a star or not, right? I've never played that role. <laughs> to overemphasize a relationship. Not even really with Sheena, right? The problem with Sheena was everything happened so quickly, I'm not sure what I even did wrong to piss her off, to break up with me, right? <laughs> And then I'm wondering if the shipmates are messing with her, and then I don't know how to prove that, right? Because she's on one ship and I'm on another. And even then, right, I don't know what they're doing, and no one's telling me anything. Shit. No one's asking me certain questions. They're all assuming it was me if someone wrote her from the ship, right? No, it wasn't. <laughs> all me, right? Especially if they're typing up letters in my name and I'm writing their handwritten letters, right? From the beginning. The only thing I would have sent to her that's not handwritten is a card, right? <laughs> you know what I mean, right? <laughs> like, if she sends me a card, I'll send her a card back, right? I know. And she did. And she did. <laughs> And like I said, I never judged her, but I couldn't figure out what was her or them, right? And I quit getting letters, and they let one where she actually probably broke out with me. But that was like after we left Sicily, right? Which is almost a month or two later, right? A month and a half later, right? <laughs> and the thing good for them to do to any shipmate, right? Even if you're trying to make me the black sheep, you're trying to make me the black sheep, right? Never. So, but the mental did really happen. That's the problem, right? The but in '93, right? His sorrows, and I, I asked Coach mm -hmm. Mike to be here today because I want you mm -hmm. to help Charlie behave his way through this and make sure that doesn't happen because that's what you want. You want him to have a better mm -hmm. life and, life and move forward mm -hmm. and that's all about behaving his way through this. It, it is and, and not feeling it alone. I mean, I know you probably have a hard time trusting people in this moment, but when you have the right help and support, mm -hmm. you won't end up in a situation again. And like your daughter's concerned, Brittany, you know, you drinking after this is probably very likely, right? A little. A little, right? And how many nights a week do you drink? Uh, three or four, maybe five. Or five or six. Well, well what is the day off? <laughs> Honestly. No days. Okay, so, the, so you're drinking regularly. Well, that, that ain't my issue at all, really. If I drink, it's like a little margarita here and there and even Paul said you could drink a little right just don't drink obsessively right now, I don't even judge you if you drink beer on the weekend right but you don't want to get blackout drunk that's the problem you don't know right right now if you're an alcoholic that's where you need what counseling now if you drink a drink and you've got to have the whole damn 24 pack or 12 pack, right? Like, yeah, you need to control that, right? I mean, I might not be need to drink at all or learn to do so responsibly more, right? And have a, your wife or someone like your friend who's a real friend, right? Now, some friends want you to be an ass. <laughs> you don't need those kind of friends, right? <laughs> Some friends don't care if you show your ass, right? You don't want to be around them. They're trying to make you look bad so they look good, right? People like that, right? <laughs> but they know they can't. But that's not good to do to anybody. Right. Mm. And yes, that's the whole point to everything, right? We're all struggling in this world of what? <laughs> this world below. <laughs> but like I said, 
If you tell your patrons, and whether it's Richard Brand or mm, Pastor David telling them they can masturbate, we know that. <laughs> Most men do. Most <laughs> men do. But the problem is to use it as a tool to recruit you next, right? There you're getting a little uh -huh, crazy, right? <laughs> Because, see, a eunuch shouldn't do it even with another man, right? Now, I know two, you know, men, right? Mm -hmm. Traveling together is better than one traveling alone. But still, <laughs> and they can keep each other warm at night. But that's not about mm -hmm, playing with each other now and now. <laughs> now, even so, when you complete a journey, right? You need a woman, though, to make another man or another woman, right? You can't make somebody uh, any other way. <laughs> now, if you two men and you commit to each other that way, mm -hmm, or two women even, mm -hmm, I'm not to judge that either because I want to understand you, right? I don't want to hurt you, right? Even if you feel differently, but at the same time, realize, right, you are going against the norm, right? You're kind of rebelling, right? Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft in the Bible. <laughs> so it's a kind of witchcraft. You're tricking yourself. But we don't want to abuse your freedom of will, right? The reason you can do that, though, is it's an other choice. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm taught by the Bible that I'm to forgive you, right? Any mistake, really, right? If I love you, right? Even if it's be with the same sex, right? Like my cousins who I've heard were gay growing up. I don't condemn them for that, right? I forgive them, right? I don't judge them, right? I love them. They're my cousins. And if they go gay, they go gay. If they say straight, they say straight. That's up to them, right? I love them anyway, <laughs> But what Moses is teaching you is how the devil does it, right? How the devil judges, how the devil punishes, right? First, you got to know your enemy. To know your friends, right? <laughs> it's the devil who condemns you for every little mistake you make. That's why he wrote the Torah, right? To kind of explain that. But to even shave your hair is an offense to God. But why? Because mm -hmm. your hair grows out as it means you're intended to, right? You have to cut your hair whether you're male or female, right? Your hair is like a leaf of a tree, right? It's your covering, right? It's so you're not completely nude, right? You have no hair. You have no hair. Now they say the woman's hair is her glory, but it's also the glory of a man. <laughs> we have long hair. Ask Samson. <laughs> and Jesus is rumored to have long hair. And what they did is they braided it in seven braids, according to the um, Nora. Menorah. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that too. I know that. And like I told you, oh no. <laughs> right, move on, move on. Either forgive the person, and like I said, they're coming to my channel, so I talk to them, I'm raising with them, I'll say, I know you're wrong, but you're going to keep saying it, and that's okay, right? <clears throat> I keep explaining that to them. <laughs> There's no way in hell I ever touch with that, right? <laughs> Oh, God's green earth, I don't care if she went in there voluntarily or not. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. Right. <laughs> All I'm going to do is ask her who showed her that first. What you doing in here with me? <laughs> oh, that ain't normal. <laughs> Little girl. <laughs> you ain't supposed to be in here with me. All right. If I don't try to tend to her needs first either, right? So I'm going to think, right, well, first thing, right? Is why is she in here with me? What does she need, right? Well, she might need something to look at her mom, right? That's logical, too, right? <clears throat> if she were to, right? 
So then you deal with her real needs first, right? If she has any, right? So we know four of them involve what, right? Peeing or going to the bathroom at four, right? She might not feel comfortable about the bathroom. She might want me to just turn on the light. I don't know. And that's how she stayed around me. I don't know, right? <laughs> like I said in the story, I'm making it up, right? <clears throat> One state to another, right? <laughs> Another problem is the light wasn't on in the bathroom. Maybe she's probably turn the light on. Who knows? Who knows, right? Right? When you're making up a hypothetical <laughs> and you're not thinking really about it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but whatever reason, like I said, I'm making up the story. She has to be in there with me in the living room where I can interact with her in the first place. Right? That's the first faux pas for her. As if she was coached, right? Not me coaching her. I'm not around her to coach her that way, right? So the first thing I wonder, if I do go sexual, right? Or think it's sexual, right? Is why she even in there with me who coached her. Right? But none of it is within the margin of what? Real interaction with a child is for, right? None of it proves any real interaction... And even if I'm making sure she didn't pee and have to smell her, I'm talking about sticking out my tongue as you would with any child changing their diapers or underwear, right? <laughs> even, right? You might do that, right? To change them for a bath, right? Or to get a bath with the child yourself. You might undress yourself, right? Anyone can make that part up, too, right? And say, okay, I could have undressed, but why would I unless I thought she's, you know, needed a shower, <laughs> Right. <laughs> now, if I'm jerking off to her, <laughs> then I'm doing something sexual with her. Right? But if I'm walking around the couch, I'm trying to see if she's comfortable with me and to take a bath with me. Right. <laughs> I never took a bath with a child. <laughs> I did with my mom when I was around the same age. Right. So I would probably could have done that. Right. But I probably also would think twice about it too. Right. Either way, either way. <laughs> I know you can do it, but I don't know why I would do it unless I'm, you know, in a different state of mind. And no one in the area knows what's going on but me and the girl, right? Because the mom ain't using a mirror or something, right? So she's either asleep or awake, like I told you, right? We're dealing with two possibilities, not one. Like, OJ knows how he would kill his wife differently, <laughs> Uh, no, you shouldn't want to get her at all. <laughs> There's no hypothetical where I would ever harm my wife or stepdaughter. I would just either divorce my wife and go back to base or, again, not touch her stepdaughter if she came in to me, her daughter if she came in there to me, right? And woke me up, right? That's what I'm trying to establish here, right? Of course, I might do certain other things, right? Like I'm trying to tell you, right? I'm like, if she comes in there, help her pee or help her do this or help her do that or give her something to eat or drink, right? Normal things, right? Even though I'm in the guilt, right? I still know what it's like for my mom to raise my sister from the time she was born to the time I joined the Navy, right? And I'm around my mom watching her do all this stuff, right? That's an education in and of itself, <laughs> Even if I didn't do it but a few times myself, I'm watching her raise my sister, right? And that helps me to know if my wife had a daughter, how to interact with her, too, right? And then where I can't take it too far where I can do certain things as a stepdad, right? Same as a stepmom in the same situation. The stepmom can give her a bath. The stepmom can help her get a potty. But not the stepdad, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Some of those. Uh-huh. <laughs> then you're making it sexual, right? And it's not sexual, right? And it's not sexual. <laughs> Bye.